All right, welcome back. Today I wanted to look at the find all duplicates in an array problem. Uh, this is a common leak code problem, uh, leak code number 442. So given an integer array of nums, uh, with linked all the integers of nums are in one to n, each integer only appears tw once or twice, return an array of all integers appears twice. Okay, so yeah, so a few problems that we're gonna, a few ways that we're gonna implement this. Um, you can think about this as like, if I wanted to iterate over the array twice, uh, that would be big O of n, tw n squared. So that's not going to be what we want. Um, we could also think about this as what if this was in a pre-sorted array. So So if it's pre-sorted, then we just have to check one against the other, right? Turn this. Now we have to check if the result already has it. Okay, so we have that. Now this extra contains is going to give us an extra Mount, so we can actually use the binary search here. That way we can avoid that extra iteration over our nums. Okay, so now we have that. So that's one way to do this problem. Uh, let's try a different way. So maybe instead of doing this iteration here with the pre-sorted array, what if we actually looked at this from a hash set or hash map standpoint? So we're going to do hash map, and that hash map is going to contain, the key is going to be the number, and then the value is going to be the number of times we encountered it. And we still have this result. I actually want to do hash set, um, or we can just leave it like that. Uh, yeah, hash set. deal, same deal. Okay, so it's not pre-sorted anymore. And then here we're going to say into iter collect. All right. Um, so assuming that, uh, so we have a hash map. Let's say we want to, um, yeah, let's rename this to map. So that makes sense. So we're going to use the entry API of HashMap, right? HashMap implements the entry API, which allows for a complex method of getting, setting, updating, removing keys and values. So if we do player stats, in this case, dot entry or insert, so that's one way to do it. Um, yeah. So given a key's corresponding entry in the map in place uh, mutation. Let's do that. So we're going to say map that entry. It's going to be i dot or insert zero, right? And remember, it's going to return a mutable value. So dot or insert you can see yeah and mute. So let v equals that. V is mutable. So we can say star v equals one, so we've incremented it, and then we can just say if star v is greater than one, and results, and actually we don't have to care about that. All right. Uh, results, hash set, hash set, yep. Oh. Import that. Oh, it's right there. Turn results. Oh, still same thing here. Okay. 
All right, so we have that. This doesn't be immutable. So that's one way to do, another way to do it. Um, what happens if we wanted to uh, pre-allocate a vector? So given a vector of n values, we could pre-allocate n and then just use each number as an index and increment it that way. So one way to do that is with the uh, vec with capacity, right? But this actually is not going to give us any length. Uh, and another thing to, to note about capacity reallocation, um, and I'll link a uh, this in the description, particularly for, for vectors here, it has uh, this section right here. So vex will not specifically overwrite any data that is removed from it. it won't preserve it either. It initializes memory of scratch base. Uh, even if you zero vex memory first, it might not actually happen. So something to be aware of if you're dealing with vectors. So we're going to do, this is going to be a, right, that'll allocate a vector of n. And yeah, so we do that. Still going to have this, still going to have that. So here, which is effectively the same thing as our hash map. The only difference here is we've already have an array. So Say I I'm just gonna panic here. So we don't want to support anything below uh, zero. Uh, this and mute on the right hand of the expression is another way to get a mutable reference to the right hand portion of the exp uh, expression. Another way to write this. Uh, would be to use on the left hand of the expression. So you'd say ref mute. These two are the same. And then you can dereference that. Compile one. Might be I. Okay, so that's the same as, that's nearly identical as our find duplicate set uh, by using a hash map and a hash set. So, uh, the advantage of doing it this way with the hash set here is we're so we're allocating a new entry for every single item. Um, here we're allocating we're using the that array for every item, um, and then in this first version here we're moving over it twice. Um, there might be actually another way to think about this. So if we look at it like well if we're already using uh, each item in the array. Um, there, might be, there might be something to do that. So we're maybe we're popping values off and we're kind of indexing it that way. Um, but yeah, so this is just kind of like basic practice for Rust, a little bit getting more familiar with things. Um, so yeah, we use the entry API, use this into iter function here to collect the hash set into a vector. And uh, let's just make sure we have our tests here. And allocate. All right. And then we're going to just cargo test. All right, so those pass. Cool. So got a few different uh, versions of this algorithm. Um, again, the, the main reason why I do these kind of practice problems is just to have something to work on every day to just get better and better and get more and more familiar, ingrain it into your minds like, OK, this is how we use the various APIs within Rust, and just be so familiar that you don't actually need to look up any documentation it's just in your mind, like, oh, I need to use a vector. I need to use a hash map. I need to use a hash, hash set. That's in standard collections. Um, if I need something to be immutable, I need to sort it, push it. Like, be familiar with all the basics, and it'll just be kind of right at right at the tip of your memory. So, like, you'll you'll just know it uh, all the time. So, uh, obviously, some of the more complicated APIs, that's something to lean on documentation. But you should know the basics, um, and that's kind of why I do these programming exercises.
So yeah, uh, if you like this, like these videos, please like them. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It kind of grows the channel. And yeah, I will definitely see y'all in the next one. Thanks again.